Hey guys and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. We're going to go through some problem solving questions that you would typically see in the higher chemistry course in this video. So obviously problem solving questions, they are different <laughs> all the time. So there's no like one size fits all answer for these. However, you do tend to see similar types of problem solving questions. So I'm going to go through some of those most common types and this is not the exclusive list of types because they do change up all the time but it's just ones that commonly come up, a few of them that might help you when you're sitting your exam. So the first type is naming a fancy molecule type of question is what I'm going to call it and it does just use your knowledge of naming rules that you learned at like National 5 and then built on in the higher. So this particular question here is giving you examples of fatty acids and it's got their common name. So like that would be what we would call it, not calling it by a systematic chemical name. The systematic name and then the structure and it's given you three examples and it wants you to come up with the systematic name for the linoleic acid so we're basically filling out this missing gap in the table so we can use our previous knowledge on naming and the examples given to us previously to try and work out what the name for this thing is so it's because all of them end in anoic acid or oic acid, this one is probably going to end in oic acid as well. So we know what the ending of the name is. So I'll just write that down here. If we then look at the start of the name, because that's usually to do with numbers of carbons, they're all octa deck, octa deck, which means that they probably all have the same number of carbons. So if we count how many carbons in this, there's one here. 16 in this and then so that's 17 and then this one here is 18 so octadec must mean 18 which makes sense because we know oct is 8 and dec is 10 so if we just double check our one also has 18 carbons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 plus 7 is 17 18 so we can conclude that the start of the name is probably octadec because it's also got 18 carbons. So now we just need to really deal with the middle bit. Now, if we look at the pattern um, with the numbers, so this one doesn't have a number. This one has a number nine and we can see it's got a double, one double bond. So that leads us to believe that probably it's a number for where the double carbon to carbon bond is. Here, this molecule's got two double bonds and it's got two numbers. So again, that confirms our thinking that it's probably for the double bond. So this one's got three double bonds, which means it's going to have three numbers. So we just need to work out where those numbers go. So for this one, um, that's on carb. This is carbon nine here. Um, because we number from the end closest to where the functional group is. And that's something you learned in National 5. So for this one, this must be carbon nine here as well. I number that on so then for our one this bit looks the same so this must be carbon 9 here as well okay so if we then count the carbons we've got 9 10 11 12 that's where the next double bond is located and then 13 14 15 Okay, we'll just put in the number for the other double bond in this one just to check. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so our numbers must be 9, 12, 15. So we add those in. And then one last thing we need to check is the rest of the name. So the first one's octadecanoic acid, then it's octadecenoic acid, and then it's octadecdienoic acid. So that's following a pattern based on the fact that there's double bonds being added. So if this one with one double bond is in, this one with two double bonds is di in, then we've got three double bonds, so we would need a tri. So it's going to be tri in. 
folic acid. So the bit most people struggle with in this question would be adding in the tri bit. So just look for any patterns in the names that you can see and just follow on that pattern. But you will need to use some of your naming rule knowledge from National Vibe and higher. So if that's something you need to practice, then I would have a go at brushing up on it using like BBC Bite Size or something. So the next type of question um, I like to call chemical spot the difference. So you're given, a, and these can be a multiple choice or extended response, but usually you're given an example reaction and then asked to apply that example to another compound or another molecule. So it tells us that cyanohydrin compounds can be made from carbonyl compounds by reacting the carbonyl compound with hydrogen cyanide. So this is our carbonyl compound here. You should know that from your higher unit two knowledge. And then there's the hydrogen cyanide, which it tells us is that thing there. And then we can see it makes this. So this is where the game of spot the difference is. So you want to see how has this molecule changed into this molecule. So usually the changes always happen at the functional groups. So if we highlight what's happened, so this functional group has now become that. Okay, the rest of the molecule has stayed the same. Nothing's changed there. So then it asks us which carbonyl compound would react with the hydrogen cyanide to form this. So we know that looking at this example, that where the carbonyl group is where that OH and CN ended up. So if we highlight where the OH and CN is, then that's where we want our carbonyl to be. And we want the rest of the molecule to be exactly the same. So we need our carbonyl to be on the second carbon here. So that rules out uh, this one and also rules out this one. It could This one could still be a potential because it is on the second carbon, just on the other side. But we need a CH3 branch. Now this one, C, doesn't have a CH3 branch, which means it can't be C either. So our answer has to be A. Okay, so you are just looking for how is this molecule changed in the example and then apply that change either backwards or going forwards, depending on what the question is, to the new molecule that you're presented with. So then this one here is a bit of a graph question. So they've got a graph here, a scatter graph, that's showing you uh, the solubility of sulfur dioxide in water. And it's asking you to determine the solubility of sulfur dioxide in grams per litre in water at 10 degrees. So when you've got a scatter graph like this, if it doesn't already have it, we need to draw a line of best fit. So I'm just going to draw a line that goes as close to all the points as possible. Okay. And then that means that we can then go to 10 degrees, go up to our line of best fit. And that would be around about here which would be on this scale 165, because we're going up in fives. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 200. Okay, so 165. And you don't need to give the liters because the, lit eh, the units, sorry, because they are given in the question, but I'm just gonna copy the, them down anyway. It's a good habit to get into copying down your units. Because if they're not there in the question, it means you get the mark for having them included. So then here we've got kind of like a spot the difference, but it's identifying a missing substance. So the easiest way to approach these is to use the fact that atoms can't be created or destroyed in chemical reactions. They can only be converted into new chemical compounds. So anything we have on this side we must have had at the start. So what I tend to do is just score out everything that appears on both sides. So we have a CH3, so I'll score out, it can be any CH3. And then we've also got an O. So if we score out an O, and then an H. So we'll score out uh, an H somewhere as well. Something like that too. Okay. And then that leaves us with whatever X is going to be. So we have CH3, C, a CH3, and then a CH2. 
which means that we must need to put a double bond in here because we don't have enough hydrogens to make it single bonds. So that must be your structure for compound X. Okay, so just score out the atoms that appear on both sides and then whatever you're left with is what must have been in your other reactant. Or otherwise, you sometimes get asked what the other product is. And in that case, again, it's whatever reactant atoms you're left with would make up your product. Okay, you could, don't need to necessarily draw it the same orientation that I have. You could draw the CH3 down here. It wouldn't really matter. Okay, so then our last type of question here is one that involves identifying patterns and predicting. So normally in higher, the, the predicting like, uh, type patterny questions involve two structural changes a lot of the time. So you should notice there's two things changing within the examples that you're given. So um, we're not doing this one. This is not problem solving. So just part two. So the student found the following information about the boiling points of some aldehydes. So these are all the aldehydes here, their molecular formulas and their boiling points. And it wants you to predict the boiling point in degrees Celsius for this molecule here. So what we need to do is look at what it's structure like what its molecular formula is probably how many carbons has it got in it so it's one two three four five six seven eight carbons so there are no aldehydes in this table that have eight carbons the closest one we have is seven carbons okay so if we look then this is a straight chain aldehyde You'll notice in the examples we're given, some are straight chains, some have got branches. So that's the two structural differences. We can compare what happens to the boiling point when the number of carbons in the straight chain increases. And then using some of these ones, we can also compare what happens when you add extra methyl branches. Okay, so this one, it's a straight chain alkane. So if we look at the pattern, for adding a carbon in the straight chain one, we can see that as you add another carbon, the boiling point increases. So that means it's going to have to be bigger than this one. Okay, so it has to be larger than 153. Okay, the other difference here is that the adding another branch, so if you add on a branch, that decreases the boiling point okay um, but ours doesn't have any branches and there's no eight carbon ones with branches so we don't need to worry about another boiling point that that needs to fit in between so if it had given us a aldehyde with eight carbons and it had a branch on it we would have to make sure that this boiling point we're giving this was higher than the one with the branch because adding a branch decreases the boiling point so that's just one thing to watch out for because sometimes there's two molecules it's very similar to and you have to fit it in between so yeah you basically just want to pick a number that was larger than 153 and i would probably look at the differences that have occurred in these ones so 28 and the difference here would be plus 23 so let's just say we'll add on but something between 18 and 20 degrees for the eight carbon one. So I'll just add on 20 because it's an easy number to add on. So we'll just say it's 173 degrees Celsius. Okay, so these pattern ones can be quite difficult sometimes, but trying to see where your molecule fits within the examples given always helps. And if it is a very simple um, pattern, then look at what the changes are each time so that you can add that on. Okay. So I hope this helps a little bit with your problem solving, but they really do just take practice, unfortunately. If you did find this helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos.